Hey, what's up, peoples? Hardleg Joe here with my deck profile for the Super Heavy Pain Train, an OTK deck centered around this chunky choo choo and the Super Heavy Samurais that help bring him to the field. Going over our deck list, we're playing three Jizz Monsters, three Early Access Beast, three Gamera, who is friend to children, one Big, three Waluigi, three Ario Speedwagon, a trio of good Two Rivers Longbows, two Reptiles, three Ass, three Ghost Onions, a Fisto, two Satchmo, two Butterball, three Omewa no Shinduru, a pair of horny cards, and some kind of cyborg bondage device. As for our extra deck, it contains three Batman villains, me, a Link 3, Plan C, Plan B, some MSTs, two shootin' dojis, a Sam that attacks directly, Sarah Toby, QB, the biggest a Sam can be, and the last thing your opponent will see. As for the side deck, it's not an actual side deck, but instead, just a bunch of other alternative cards you might want to consider. I'll go over them later on, though I do quickly want to mention Sekka's Light. Because a lot of people seem to think this is really good in Super Heavy Samurais, and it is not. If you're unfamiliar, this allows you to draw two cards and then banishes itself from the graveyard to cycle an additional card. The only downside is that once you activate this, you cannot activate any other spell trap cards or effects for the rest of the duel. At first glance, this seems great because one of Super Heavy Samurai's main gimmicks is that they don't play spells or traps because a lot of their effects require you to have zero spell traps in the graveyard. Having one spell like Sekka's Light that draws some cards and then immediately scoodles on out of the graveyard seems like a perfect fit. The problem is one of our biggest playmakers works by equipping itself from the hand to any monster you control. From there, you can then tribute that monster to summon any super heavy samurai out of the deck. This is a very powerful effect, but because it's equipped in the spell trap zone, using it counts as a spell effect. So by activating Sekka's Light, you turn off one of the strongest cards we have, which is not worth it. You'll also turn off Soul Horns, which is not as important, but still useful. This can also equip itself from the hand, and when it does, the equipped monster gets two attacks per turn, which is critical for closing out games in this OTK deck. Uh, it also summons itself as a monster while equipped, which is useful for link climbing into Excess Code Talker if your main OTK fails. We have one more equip spell slash monster, and that is Soul Piercer. This gives the equipped monster piercing damage, as the name implies, but more importantly, if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can search any super heavy samurai card. This is not once per turn, which is why this is a key card for your main combo. I'll get to that in a moment, but first, let's go over the rest of the important pieces of that combo. A big Wariji is a level 5 that you can special summon from your hand if there's no spell traps in your graveyard. It locks you into only special summoning Super Heavy Samurais this turn, so if you want to summon a Kaiju or an Alpha Male, make sure you do it before you summon this. Uh, it has other effects as well, but they aren't important. Likewise, Fist has a lot of effects, but the only one we really care about is this. Once per turn, if it's in the graveyard, you can reduce the level of a Synchro monster you control by one, and then summon this onto the field, basically like Level Eater. Finally, there's Wagon, which is not actually part of the combo, but an alternate starter. When it's summoned, you can switch its battle position, which is important because once per turn, if you have no spell traps in the grave, you can switch it from defense to attack in order to search a super heavy samurai. So you normal summon this, it goes to defense, and then you switch it back to attack to search. A uh, Kind of weird, but... But whatever, it gets you Soul Piercer, which is how you start your one card combo. Uh, speaking of which, let's go ahead and show that now. It's actually what they call a one and a half card combo, because you do need another card in hand in order to do it. It's just that that second card can be literally anything, so you'll always be able to do it on your first turn, as long as you get one of your two openers. In this case, we're going to use Wagon, because it's slightly more complicated. 
You use its effect to search Soul Piercer and then equip it to Wagon. Then you send Wagon to the graveyard to summon our archetypal link monster, Scarecrow. This will send Piercer from the field to the graveyard, which gets you the search you need to do the rest of your combo. This link can be made with any single super heavy samurai monster, so if you open with a bow, you can just normal summon it instead of Wagon, and then link it off to get your search. The combo is the same from here regardless, the only important thing is that you get your link on the field and that you search Soul Peacemaker, the first equip card that we talked about. From here, you use the link monster's effect, which is to discard a card and then summon any super heavy samurai out of the grave to a zone it points to. This is why you needed that extra card, just to use for this effect. Uh, discard your card to bring back Piercer, then equip your strange bondage device to Scarecrow, and tribute it off to summon Super Heavy Samurai Fist from the deck. This is a level 2 tuner, so it, along with your bow, will allow you to make Shuten Doji a level 6 synchro. This thing destroys all your opponent's back row when it's summoned, which helps clear the way for an OTK, and because it activates at the same time as your second bow search, you can chain block it to ensure that your opponent can't easily negate this. Speaking of that second search, you use this to get Wariji, the level 5 that can special summon itself, which you immediately do. Then all that's left is to use Fist's effect in the graveyard. By lowering Shuten Doji's level to 5, you get your tuner back on board while giving you the perfect levels for our ultimate boss monster. Super Heavy Samurai Steam Train King is a level 12 synchro that requires three Super Heavy Samurai monsters. Like all boss monsters in this archetype, the train can attack while in defense position and uses its defense for damage calculation. And at 4800 defense, it is one of the single strongest monsters in the game. In fact, there are only nine other monsters with an original attack higher than this and almost all of them are far more difficult to summon. Now, of course, 4800 attack by itself is not enough for game, but if you recall, we have Soul Horns, which allows us to attack twice, which is well over lethal on an open field. And you can easily get an open field because Steam Train has the ability to discard one or two cards and destroy that many cards on field, allowing you to clear out whatever else you need. And even if the field isn't open, we also have Super Heavy Samurai Soul Buster Gauntlet, aka the One Punch Fist. This is a hand trap that you can discard in the damage step to double a Samurai's defense giving our train well over 9,000. Between these two, you can usually assemble game rather quickly, even on established boards. And it's not too difficult to get both of these, even though we only play horns at two. This is because, as you saw, we usually get two or three searches during the course of our two-card combo. This is a go-second deck, so we'll have four other cards in hand, and if one of those cards is a piece of our combo, like if you open with Peacemaker, that means you don't need to search that piece out. Instead, you can use your search to grab one of these game enders, assuming you didn't already open with them. That being said, my ratios are far from perfect. You probably should be playing a third horns now that I'm thinking about it, but it worked well enough in the two weeks that I had to test this. Uh, but yeah, that's the main crux of the deck, and everything else is kind of a tech card. Like, you should probably be playing at least one Trumpeter. This is another level 2 tuner, and you could special summon it from your hand for free if there's no spell traps in your graveyard. If you happen to open with Fist, you'll want to discard it to the graveyard with your Link, and then use one of your searches on this instead, since it can help you make your initial level 6 Synchro. I also like playing it at 2, both because it's searchable, you run into, it helps you make some of your other synchros if your OTK doesn't work out. Likewise, you'll probably want to run one Big Ben K. This is the original Super Heavy Samurai boss monster, a 3500 booty that allows all samurais to attack while in defense position. If your combos get messed up, you can easily summon this out of the deck with Peacemaker, and at least have a 3500 beat stick to defend yourself. It can't OTK as easily as the train can, but it can still do quite a lot, especially if you manage to get gloves and horn. Scales, meanwhile, is a pretty good extender that I search for when I'm going first. 
When it's summoned, you can summon another samurai out of the graveyard, which helps you make your Ixies. In fact, there's actually a one card combo that I could show you real quick. If you open with bow, you can summon it, send it to the grave for Scarecrow, search scales, then discard scales to summon scales, who will summon back bow, giving you the material you need for a rank 4 Ixie. Baguska is my go-to card going first. Not only does it stop a lot of decks from performing, but it has awesome synergy with the Samurais. If you're unfamiliar with Plan B, while it's in defense mode, all monsters go to defense mode, and defense mode monsters can't activate their effects. This usually stops all non-Link monsters since they can't attack and they're negated, but Super Heavy Samurais can just attack while in defense position. And that effect is continuous, it doesn't activate, so Baguska doesn't stop it. So if you can get out Bagu and Benkai, maybe equipped with a Soul Piercer, your opponent's monsters will be stuck in defense position, Well, you'll have a 3500 attacker that does piercing damage, and may also be able to attack twice and go up to 7000 attack. Uh, but yeah. The only other samurai in here then is Battle Ball, who presents a unique alternative to your main combo. This is a level 2 tuner, and its effect states, if all you control are super heavy samurais and you have no spell traps in the graveyard, you can target a monster your opponent controls and essentially synchro summon with it and battle ball, ignoring the summoning conditions. In other words, if your opponent has a level 10 monster on the field, you can normal summon battle ball and use both of them to make your level 12 train without using a ton of resources. This is why we play Jizakiru, a level 10 kaiju. Not only is it removal, but it's removal that can allow us to make our win condition if we open with Battle Ball, or search it off something like Peacemaker. This is also why we play all the other Super Heavy Samurai Synchros in here. You rarely summon them on your own, but they're for using with your opponent's monsters. If you get Ball, you have coverage from everything from 4 all the way up to 10. It's super fun and cheesy when it happens, Although, if I had to cut any Super Heavy Samurai out of here, it would probably be the ball. Everything else in here is what I'd call a true tech card, something that can be replaced with just about anything. Their only real synergy is that they're all monsters, which are the only cards we can use anyway. Alpha is a good going second card, it baits out removal, puts on extra damage for the OTK, and it can also bounce the kaijus back to your hand, so then you can use them a second time. Gamma Su we just play because it's the weakest kaiju and you can often OTK over it. And the hand traps are just, just hand traps. They're good in every deck. I usually try not to play this many, but I'm kind of limited with what I can do here. There's just no spell traps I can use. If you want to change these out, there's a few other hand trap ideas in the side deck. Mostly the usual suspects. Though if you're looking for a draw engine, there's this new OCG card that might be just what you need. Check it out. Uh, other than that, there's a few other Samurais I considered playing. Flute contribute itself to summon a Samurai out of your hand and provides targeting protection while it's in the graveyard. This used to be a three of staple in older builds and some people still swear by him, but these days I found him way too slow and outdated. Usually you're trying to end the game on your first turn, before you need targeting protection. Uh, Thief, meanwhile, is spell trap removal. You can summon him from your hand for free and then tribute him to pop the opponent's back row. Archfiend Eccentric is pretty much the same thing, but in pendulum form so you won't get icky spells in your graveyard. I considered running both of these for a while since back row heavy decks are becoming more popular at the moment, but honestly, if you're playing against a deck full of floodgates and counter traps, these two are not going to save you. Uh, I just accepted that the deck has weaknesses and focused on its strengths instead. Uh, speaking of which, if you wanted to try to make this deck combo harder and perhaps get out two big boss monsters, I have a couple engines you might want to consider. One is the Symphonic Warrior Pendulums. Guitar can discard in order to summon Mike from the deck, who gives you a second normal summon, and is also a machine which works with some of your synchros. Likewise, Gizmek Yado also gives you a normal summon, this time by tributing a normal summoned monster you control, which is a great way to trigger Soul Piercer without getting your Link onto the field. There might be some way you can use these two, as well as the Super Heavy Samurai Pendulums. I tried that for a while, but in my short time working with the deck, I just couldn't quite make it fit. 
Maybe you can, though. Now that you know the basics of playing the deck, you can mess around and try to improve on what I started. Regardless of what you do, hopefully you learned something. Like the video if you liked it, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe if you want more unique deck profiles in general. I do one of these every other week. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, good luck and have fun.